The church of Jesus Christ is largely sleeping. They got rid of bedroom. And you have all the Christians in bed and they're all sleeping. And they're saying, please, don't wake me up. I want to sleep on. And of course, when the God starts to operate a revival, people cannot sleep. You can't sleep in church. But the Spirit of God awakes the people. Look at the first verse of this 52nd chapter. Awake! Awake! Put on strength! Wake it up, you sleepy Christians! Awake, all oh, that sleep us! Arise from the dead! Christ will give you life! Keep this in mind from an old man. There is no finality to the Christian life this side of eternity. We pray that some of us may go to our own funeral tonight and die to self and end all the failure and all the weakness. Why should a person come to the cross? Why should a person embrace death with Christ? Why should a person be willing to go in identification down to the cross and into the tomb and up again? I'll tell you why. Because it's the only way that God can get glory out of a human being. If I were to ask you tonight, you're saved. Do you say, yes, I'm saved? When? Oh, so and so preached, I got baptized, and are you saved? What are you saved from? Hell? Are you saved from bitterness? Are you saved from lust? Are you saved from cheating? Are you saved from lying? Are you saved from bad hands? Are you saved from rebelling against your parents? Come on, what are you saved from? Who shall ascend the hill of God? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul to vanity nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing of the Lord. And there's no room for him in the inn. He got a bit older. There was no room in his family. His family turned on him. He went to the temple. No room in the temple. The temple turned on him. And when he died, there was no room to bury him. He died outside of the city. Well, why in God's name do you expect to be accepted everywhere? How is it the world couldn't get on with the holiest man that ever lived and it can get on with you and me? Are we compromised? Are we compromised? Are we no spiritual stature? Are we no righteousness that reflects on their corruption? Even this from above is above all. You want to say to your Christians, don't go around apologizing for him. Don't go around worried because you can't make his doctrines fit in with what you've learned in school. All you learned in school was one fallen head instructing another fallen head. And you don't have to apologize for him. But as dear Dr. Tozer used to say, Len, you knew one thing about a man that was carrying a cross out of the city. You knew he wasn't coming back. Let's come to a altar and we go back the next week and we're as fascinated. We haven't spent half an hour with Jesus, but we'll stay two stinking hours in a movie house. And Paul says that's what the world is to me. It's a system of corruption and rottenness and vileness. It's anti-Christ from the world go. Is the world crucified to you tonight or does it fascinate you? Do we not need a very much greater conception of how tremendously valuable a true expression of the church is to the Lord? It's priceless. But the Lord give us more of this anguish for his church as a whole. Then it will be precious to him.